talk about the Summer Art Bento box and to show you the project video that goes along with the materials in the box. Um, I'm super excited about this box. Uh, I do feel like I say that every single box, every single time I shoot one of these, but I think it's because each box is unique in its own way. And this box in particular has a supply that I have been using quite a bit lately. And I can't wait to get in and show you what it is. So let's get going. Of course, when you open the box, you have the menu card. We have the main courses, that's what everybody gets the same of. Fruits and veggies, that variety is the spice of life. You may get a different color, but the supplies are the same. And then dessert, a little something extra. And usually this is just a little something that's thoughtful or a unique item or just kind of the wild card item in the box. So let's get to it. I have um, summer themed tissue paper. So we got bright and colorful right, off, right out of the gate. And getting into the box, we have a Da Vinci Pro panel. These are really so much fun because they have a nice depth, they're wood, these are the gessoed panels, so they are all ready to go. And they accept oils and acrylics and lots of different drawing media. And we will be doing our project on this. And we will be using the Daler Rowney F&W Acrylic Artist Ink in our project today as well, and that is in the box. Um, I put a set, a different variety of the primary colors. This box has emerald green in it, so you will get one of six colors in your box. So I'll put those aside. And then we have a little pack, and I already have opened a pack, so I'm going to pull the supplies over here, but what's in this little pack is a Faber-Castell Gelato and a High Viscosity Studio PBO. I think that's how you say it. Since there's lines on the E's, not sure, but this acrylic paint is super fun and it has a really dense texture to it. So it allows uh, for the paint to kind of stand up in its own way and have some texture and depth. Of course, we also have the paper pack and the ephemera pack. And these are just chock full of beautiful summer colors, summer paper, and ephemera. Um, one of the really fun items in here is I found this old prayer book. It's a little tiny book, and it was given to a daughter by her father in 1819. So I just thought, you know, having really authentic vintage stuff just makes it just a little nicer and like you're using something from the past and bringing it into the future. So I love putting these packs together. So that is the supplies in the summer box, and we are going to get to our project. Let me put this stuff aside. For this project, we are primarily gonna be using the art mediums in the box, so you can see how these items can work together. And we're gonna unwrap this pro panel. Oh, it's so neat when you open these. Um, you can smell that cedar wood, and this is a really, really nice smooth surface. So what we're going to do, and this is kind of a little fun technique I've been using in some of my abstract work. You're going to need some water, and you're going to need a couple of different brushes. A flat, bright brush, and a round brush for this project. Um, you could also use varying sizes of brushes, like I have some smaller flat brushes. Um, whatever you have on hand is just fine. And the first thing we're going to do is take this pro panel and we're going to get our brush wet. I'm using dirty paint water, so ignore that. You can totally use clean if you want. <laughs> um, and we're going to apply some water in some varying strokes. And it's gonna stand up on top of this gessoed surface. And I did a little round stroke and some blotching of water and I'm just adding it. Um, it's hard for you to see, but you want a good amount of water standing up on the surface of your panel. And I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna shake this ink and then we're going to apply it to the water. And as you kind of run it around a bit, and you can blow on it, it 
it just kind of exists here in the water that we placed. So by painting with water first, you get a really interesting abstract organic shape, and it just makes it a little more free form to start with as your base. I am gonna go in here as well and take my small round brush and pick up some of this paint and add some additional line work around my shape. And I touched the water there, so it's pulling out some of that paint. That's fine. Fill that in a little bit. And just allow yourself to play with some line around your organic shape. This is going to take some time to dry. So once you feel like you've got it to a place where you're happy with your background and your base, we're going to leave it to dry. So here's mine so far. I use um, dirty paint water uh, for a couple of reasons. I think it adds an interesting additional color. This one isn't a super fun color, but sometimes my paint water is blue or pink or yellow and it adds an additional color to my piece. I also find it easier to see when I'm painting with water first. So that is where we're gonna leave it and let it dry, and I'll be right back after it is done doing that. See you in a second. So we are back and this is dry. The cool thing about the ink is that you get an interesting variation when it dries that you really can't control. Um, all that much, which I really like. So you can see the ink pooled a little bit more up here where it's darker, and then there's some nice variation of lights and darks here. And then where I painted, it's lighter because it was uh, mixed with a little bit of water and diluted a little bit. So it gives some nice interest to the piece. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a standard Bic ballpoint pen this is actually um, a nice pen to carry around because you can do almost anything with it. I have it in my travel journal set. And we're gonna put some scribbles on here. I love to scribble in um, abstract work because it just gives it this sense of like freedom. And there's no wrong way to do it. I'm actually gonna go off the edges a little bit and just have a little fun with it. I might also go in and add some marks. So I'm gonna cover some of these up with these other mediums. And the surface of this panel is really nice. The pen goes onto it, just glides over the surface. So now I'm gonna get my acrylic out. This is magenta, which came in the set that I have. And I'm also going to use the Faber-Castell. I'm going to use this first. Um, I have kind of a metallic-y blue one here. And I'm going to put a little on here. And I'm doing this first because I'm going to add water to it. And I don't want to move the acrylic around. So use the bigger brush. Activate that with some water. Blend it out. Going off the edges a little bit, creating a composition. You can see that I put this gelato in three different places, and I did that to draw your eye around the piece. And I have this same kind of up and down motion that I have these marks, so it looks similar. I'm just going over any areas where gelato may be built up a little more than I want and just smoothing that down. And there's some iridescent in that. I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty cool. little paper towel. Now we are going to go in with the acrylic and I'm going to make marks. So I'm using this small brush 
And these are marks I love to make. Um, they kind of have become part of my style because I use them a lot and I like the repetition of pattern in pieces. So I made these marks with a pen and we're going to go in and make some brush marks with the magenta. And having um, this warm color very close to the complement of the green, so kind of the red and green are complements, brings some really interesting pattern and texture and color variation. If you get a color that um, you want to play with, or if you get a color that you feel like, oh, I'd love to do um, the color variation here, feel free to use any paint on this panel. It takes all kinds of acrylics. The cool thing about this high viscosity acrylic, though, is like I mentioned before, you can use the texture of the brush or drawing lines into it, and it has a really interesting like, stand-up texture. It is fairly transparent, so you can see some of the green and blues through it, through my mark making, but I like that as well. So I just put my brush in water, and the interesting thing about doing uh, abstract work is sometimes you have to listen to your intuition, and I really wanted to come back in here with this really watered down magenta and paint some over some of these white areas. Coming in here, and you can see the transparency happening over that green. Mixing a little bit with the gelato. It's okay. Just kind of pulling that pigment around on the panel. There we go there. This is looking really cool. I love these little pieces, how it becomes a whole composition and it's a very finished piece, looking piece when you're done. So I'm gonna go back in, let me clean off this brush. I'm gonna go back in with this pen just a little bit and add some more of the marks I made. A little more controlled this time just because I'm dealing with wet medium. I'm doing that mark making in three different places and it just brings another layer to the foreground. going to get out um, a Faber-Castell S size and put a signature right down here in the white. And I always date it too. So I did touch my finger here to this bit right here and I'm just going to get rid of that blotch of color that I picked up. So there we go, we have a finished piece, and I think it came together really well. I have really enjoyed working with the materials that came in this art bento box, and I hope you enjoyed this class that goes along with it. And I'd love to see what you create, how you experiment with these supplies, and what you do with your little canvas. Um, you can tag me at Art Bento Box on Facebook and on Instagram. And I'm also at Draw Riot. I'd love to see what you make. And the Art Bento Box for fall and winter are out there and available. So go grab one of those before they're all gone. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.